students welcome to my channel physics by dr pradhya and today we are going to start with the revision of our third unit which is a, a nuclear reaction so i have already made the videos on the alpha decay beta decay and gamma decay separately i will put the links in the description box so the purpose of today's video is uh, to I have a brief idea about the all the nuclear reactions. We know that the nuclear decay is one of the important nuclear reactions, but along with that, so nuclear scattering is there, nuclear fission and nuclear fusion is also there. So collectively, we are going to have a brief idea about the all nuclear reactions in just this one video. Okay, so let us start with the alpha decay. So see here. So these decay processes, whether it is alpha decay, beta decay, or gamma decay, all the decaying processes uh, happens uh, or carried away by the nuclei which are having the excess amount of energy. We call that energy as a Q value. So if there is any heavier nucleus like uranium or thorium, so each nucleus which it will have the rest mass energy or the uh, stable nuclei energy. And if there is some surplus amount of energy, suppose due to some, uh, if the nuclei is prepared or it is synthesized in a uh, in a high uh, high energy reactions, okay, or if you supply some amount of energy to some nucleus, it will go to the excited state. It means that it will possess the excess amount of energy than what is necessary for the stable nucleus. Okay, and that value is called as a Q value, and depending on that Q value, the nuclei will decide uh, which decay it will go through. Okay, for example, if there is a heavy nucleus, uh, say heavy nucleus means the mass number greater than nearly 150, so all these nuclei with the mass number a greater than 150, they will show the positive Q values. Okay, so this is a graph of this log of T1 half versus this uh, Q. Okay, so the, uh, all the nuclei which are having the mass number A greater than 150, the Q value will be positive. Okay, now suppose uh, if uh, A value is 150, it means that the number of the protons and the number of neutrons is nearly equal to 150. So, if the same nucleus will possess the excess amount of energy of say nearly 4 to 9 MeV, it will decay through the alpha decay. Okay, so the two protons and two neutrons in the nucleus combine together and they will come out of that nucleus uh, as an alpha decay process. If the excess amount of energy is a nearly uh, say uh, 400, uh, 500 to 600 kilo electron volts. If it is in a kilo electron volts, so the excess amount of proton, uh, so the proton, excess proton may convert itself into the neutron or the excess neutron may convert itself to the proton. So we know the graph of the N versus Z graph. We have already seen the beta decay processes many times. So I have already written over the here also. So if the excess amount of energy is nearly uh, 500 to 600 kilo electron volt, so the proton inside the nucleus may convert to the neutron or the neutron may convert itself to the proton. So these processes are called as a beta decay processes. And if this Q value is a uh, nucleus is not changing by the way in this case and uh, it is just uh, de-exciting uh, from the higher energy level to the lower energy level. See what I am trying to say is that in an alpha decay process, so one nucleus, parent nucleus is changing to some another nucleus. Even in a beta decay, uh, I have not written an example here, but still, so one element is changing to the another element in a beta decay, but that's, that is not the case with a gamma decay. In a gamma decay, only the uh, nucleus in a higher uh, excited state or a nucleus in a higher energy state it is converted uh, to the ground state energy okay so the element is not changing it is just a de exciting from the higher energy level to the lower energy level so the q value will decide uh, what decay the nucleus will have 
where that is going to decay by alpha process, alpha decay or beta decay or by gamma decay. Okay, and all these nuclei, uh, they are either uh, synthesized in a high energy reactions. Okay, or in a decay process. For example, this beta decay elements or the beta decay nuclei, they are generally um, they are generally uh, say, uh, prepared in this nuclear fusion reaction. So whatever this uranium two hundred and thirty six, which is a uh, you know, uh, prepared as a byproduct of this uh, uh, fission reaction, so that we decay by this. Uh, uh, so here we can see that. So these are the nuclei which are decaying by the uh, uh, beta decay processes. So the elements in which this Q value is positive, uh, say like A is greater than 150, even if the Q value is positive, it does not necessarily give the alpha decay process. We are going to see the reasons. Okay, so you just remember that the elements of the nuclei which are having A greater than 210 can only go the alpha decay process. Okay, they can only uh, give out the uh, alpha particle when this nucleus is in an excited state. Okay, now then we have drawn a graph of this Q value versus this Z. We can clearly see that this Q value goes on increasing with a, a number of protons. Okay, then uh, one more important graph uh, for the alpha decay is a graph of log of T1 half. We know that this T1 half is a half life period of a nucleus and this half life period that uh, uh, it is very sensitive to this Q value and its range is changing from plus 10 to minus 10. Okay, so from microseconds or nanoseconds to the number of years. So this T1 half is very much sensitive to this, uh, to this Q value. Now we have taken an example of uh, uh, alpha decay process uh, in which uranium uh, 92 uranium 238 uh, it is giving out 90 thorium 234 plus one uh, helium atom which is nothing but the alpha particle 2 he 4 so the explanation of this alpha decay was given by the scientists gamos we know it as a gamos theory of the alpha decay so what uh, he have considered that suppose uh, if the alpha particle it is uh, uh, prepared uh, inside the nucleus so let small r be the distance between the uh, centers of the alpha particle and center of the nucleus parent nucleus itself and capital r is the radius of the nucleus so they have considered the two cases when the r is greater than uh, small r is greater than capital r and small r is less than capital r so when this small r is greater than capital r it means that this alpha particle that is coming out of the uh, nucleus so it is acted upon by a coulombic force when and when this r is less than r in capital r it means that the helium particle or the alpha particle is inside this uh, uh, nucleus okay so in this case so this is acted only upon by the nuclear force so the scientists have made the calculation so this gamos have made the calculation for the vc which is the uh, potential uh, at this barrier okay well, classical mechanical and quantum mechanical we have tools to evaluate this uh, barrier potential so this much amount of potential is present at the boundary of the nucleus for the alpha particle if the alpha particle inside the nucleus and if you want to come out of the nucleus then it has to pass the barrier potential of 28 mega electron -hole. so these calculations i have already shown in my previous videos so you can go and watch there now see here so whatever alpha particle is coming out of the nucleus and if you measure the kinetic energy of the alpha particle in a detector so it was found to be in a range of 4 to 9 mega electron volt so which is a classical mechanical impossible thing see suppose you have the uh, potential barrier of 28 mega electron volt and if the particle with a small kinetic energy of 4 to 9 mega electron volt so it is uh, 
it is showing that this uh, uh, particle with a smaller kinetic energy is able to pass the uh, barrier potential which is much higher than the kinetic energy of this particle. So classical mechanically it looks like impossible thing but the quantum mechanics allows us such transitions and this transition is called as a this effect is called as a quantum tunneling effect. In a quantum mechanics we consider the particle uh, as a wave function okay so uh, there also uh, the scientists have made the calculations and they have just found out so this uh, kinetic energy of this uh, 2HE4 uh, can penetrate the barrier potential of this 28 mega electron hole so if you want to uh, check the calculation of this I have already made a video on that so uh, moral of this alpha decay is that so gammas for the first time used the quantum tunneling effect to explain the alpha decay. Okay. Now beta decay is a process in which the excess amount of energy is low as the 500 to 600 kilo electron volts. And the beta decay processes uh, can be of two types as a negative beta decay and a positive beta decay. Suppose if there is, so this is a graph of a n versus z so this is the number of the neutrons and number of the protons so for the lighter nuclei number of the protons and the number of the neutrons is the same okay but when you go to the uh, heavy elements the number of neutrons goes on increasing than the number of the protons okay still uh, so this dot so represents the stable nuclei now suppose if there is a, any nucleus which is having excess amount of neutron then what is required for the stable nucleus so this excess uh, nu neutron will convert itself to the proton by giving out this electron okay and a neutrino okay so which was not discovered for the four uh, before when this uh, uh, experiment or when this beta decay was found okay then afterwards we add this neutrino okay uh, I have made a separate video on this beta decay also. You can go and check all the calculations over there. Okay, so we, if the, there is any nucleus which is having excess proton, okay, and uh, which is uh, required, uh, which is excess than what is required for the stable nucleus. So this proton convert itself to the neutron by giving out this electron and some neutrino. So this type of a reaction is called as a beta decay process. Along with this, uh, if you consider the heavier nucleus, so the 2s electron wave function is uh, most of the time present inside the nucleus. So this is something um, confusing, something uh, non-commonsensical, but it is true because when you speak about the nucleus, it is completely quantum mechanical world. Okay, so for the most of the time, so this uh, 2s electron wave function is present uh, inside the nucleus. So there is a possibility of this electron capture inside the nucleus for this proton. And this proton by capturing the electron, it may get converted to the neutron. So this process is called as a electron capture. So the probability of this electron capture uh, or the activation energy for the electron capture is much higher than this beta plus. So how the scientists come to know about this neutrino so when the particles at the detector so this whether it is a proton or the neutron uh, which were collected at the detector and the kinetic energy of the particles was measured so every time it was found uh, that the particles energy is different every time and it is not a discrete but uh, it is having some continuous value Okay, so this is a graph of the number of the electrons, suppose which are collected at the detector versus this is the uh, kinetic energy. So this is the theoretically calculated value of this activation energy or the Q. Okay, and uh, the distribution of the uh, electrons was found to range from here, uh, from here to here okay suppose for example if the electron is here so this much amount of energy will be possessed by this electron so what is the so where is the excess amount of energy is going on 
okay same was the case with a proton and they found that this q value is in the range of 500 to 600 kilo electron volts and afterwards scientists came to find that so this uh, uh, excess uh, so this uh, remaining energy was carried out by the massless particle called as a neutrino massless means it is having a negligible mass as compared to the mass of the electron for example if the electron is having mass of 511 kilo electron hold then the mass of the neutrino will be nearly uh, 1 to 10 uh, mega kilo electron hold okay so this type of the dk was explained by the uh, fermi by using fermi golden rule or the uh, time dependent perturbation theory now as i already said uh, gamma decay uh, in the gamma decay the element is uh, not changing it is just uh, uh, de-exciting from the higher energy level to the lower energy level uh, so i have shown the diagram over here if there is a nucleus which is a uh, in an excited state so it can come to the ground state or the lower excited state by giving out the gamma radiation so we know that these gamma radiations are nothing but the electromagnetic radiations which are generated due to the uh, oscillating charges okay and uh, see uh, we uh, in a nuclear shell model we have seen the rotational and vibrational mode of the nucleus so due to this oscillating charges of the collective shell model, uh, the nucleus can have uh, asymmetric charge distribution inside this uh, nucleus. So the number of the, uh, of the neutrons or the protons are asymmetrically distributed inside the nucleus which will give rise uh, to the dipole, quadrupole and octapole uh, distribution of the charges. So uh, as I am saying the electromagnetic charges so the electric field which is generated due to the uh, dipole it is called as a E1 and the magnetic field associated okay we know that whenever there is an electric field magnetic field is always generated in perpendicular to that so whenever there is an electric dipole is present the magnetic field will be generated and which will have certain pattern which is called as a M1 similarly so the quadrupole uh, charge will generate a particular electric field and a particular magnetic field associated with which are called as a E2 and M2 similarly uh, octapole mode of the vibrations okay now there are certain selection with rules for the uh, electromagnetic radiations uh, which I have already discussed along with uh, uh, this alpha beta and decay scattering is also one of the important uh, nuclear reaction uh, which can be represented as a small a plus capital A and which gives the small b plus capital B where small a is a projected particle, capital A is a target particle, uh, b is a ejected particle and the capital B is a daughter nuclear which can be represented like this. So A is called as a projectile particle, capital A is a target nucleus and small b is an ejected particle and capital B is a daughter nucleus. So, in the scattering reaction, so the nuclear scattering uh, can be of uh, two types. Okay, generally this target nucleus is a heavier mass, and this uh, projected particle is a uh, particle with a very small mass, negligible as compared to this uh, target nucleus. Okay, so this A target nucleus will convert to the uh, nucleus uh, or the daughter nuclei B, and the smaller particles will be ejected. Uh, along with this uh, capital B okay so the nuclear reactions of the nuclear scattering will be of the two type like a elastic scattering in elastic scattering we know that the kinetic energy of the uh, uh, of the elements uh, which are involved uh, so before scattering and the after scattering uh, that will be exactly same so that we call as an elastic scattering okay. in elastic scattering the kinetic energy of the ejected particle or the and the daughter nuclei uh, it is always less than the projectile particle and the target nucleus okay so the in the inelastic scattering also there are two types uh, which is a, a compound nuclear reaction and a direct nuclear reaction so see here in a compound nuclear reaction if we calculate the de Broglie's wavelength of the 
incoming or the incident uh, particle okay so if this d Broglie's wave of this projectile particle is nearly equal to the uh, radius of this target particle let me show over here so this if this uh, d Broglie's wavelength is nearly equal to the so the size of the nucleus so this d Broglie's wavelength it is able to interact with the whole nucleus and there is a possibility of the formation of the compound nucleus uh, so if this d Broglie's wavelength uh, r uh, suppose this lambda is uh, nearly equal to so this r where r is the uh, radial extent of the nucleus so the, if this is the case there is a formation of the compound nucleus and if this is r lambda is very very small as compared to this nuclear radius so now this is a nucleus and if this d Broglie wavelength is very small it can interact with only two to three nucleons over there and the reaction it is called as a direct reaction which is a very quick reaction as compared to the direct nuclear reaction so in inelastic scattering two types can be seen as a direct nuclear reaction and an indirect nuclear reactions so along with this uh, decay and the scattering processes uh, nuclear fission and nuclear fusion are also two very important nuclear reactions uh, for the generation of the electricity actually nuclear fission uh, nuclear fusion is still not possible experimentally okay experiments are done uh, to check the fusion reactions but uh, they are not used commercially to generate the electricity but yes the nuclear fission is definitely used for the generation of the electricity now we know that this nuclear fission and nuclear fusion reactions can be understood uh, by the binding energy graph so this is the graph of the uh, binding energy uh, per nucleon versus the mass number a so here we can see that so the binding energy is maximum uh, nearly 8.9 mega electron hold for this uh, fe which is the most stable element on the earth or in the universe you can say okay so suppose if you have a heavy nucleus say here and uh, if this heavy nucleus uh, splits into the two nuclei of nearly equal masses so in this case so this binding energy uh, is increased or you can say the energy can be given out okay uh, in a fission reaction similarly if you are trying to fuse two lighter elements to give some heavy element here also binding energy is increased for the product element so in this case also some amount of energy can be given out like this so from the graph of the binding energy per nucleon versus this uh, uh, mass number uh, we can explain this uh, fusion reaction and this fission reaction also so let us see what is mean by a fission reaction fission reaction is just a uh, conversion of this uh, or the fission of this one heavier nuclei uh, into two nearly equal masses uh, by giving out some neutrons and some excess amount of energy okay so we have taken an example of uranium-235 which is bombarded by a slow neutron okay uh, first which we uh, form a compound nucleus of 236 and it will give uh, the uh, two elements as x and y so this x and y uh, they have not a fixed uh, uh, there are not fixed elements even if this uh, uh, target particle is fixed uh, the uh, daughter uh, nuclei uh, they uh, they have number of possible combinations okay so the possible combinations are given over here or possible combinations are, uh, so the number of possible combinations can be uh, there for the daughter nuclei which i have given over here okay so uh, here uh, this uh, nuclear fission reaction can be explained by the liquid drop model suppose if you have considered the nucleus just like as a liquid drop okay and it is having some kind of energy rest mass energy e is equal to something like this okay now if this liquid drop is uh, trying to uh, deform okay into two 
smaller droplets okay so what happens to the energy so the energy will decrease definitely so the energy is shown to be decreased for these two particles okay and the distance uh, so this energy versus this r is shown over here but obviously uh, so the starting so this r will be zero and when they are deforming so the r will increase okay and again the r will increase when they are being separated okay so the energy versus this uh, uh, distance between the centers of the uh, two droplets uh, has been um, uh, shown in this graph okay energy peak is seen into this so the difference between this peak and this uh, uh, rest of energy of this nucleus it is called as activation energy it means that to uh, have the nuclear fission you need to apply some sort of the energy that's why uh, every nucleus will not go the nuclear fission reaction so the nuclear fission reaction happens only in the nucleus with the a nearly equal to 240 but still the stable nucleus with the uh, a nearly equal to 240 can be seen because uh, the activation energy which is required for the fission reaction that is uh, some nearly uh, yes of course by using the quantum mechanical equations we can evaluate this uh, this activation energy and this uh, activation energy uh, for the uranium 235 uh, that was found to be uh, uh, 5.8 mega electron volt. We have talked about this uh, uh, Q value, which is a uh, excitation uh, energy, which can be evaluated by using uh, this equation. And this excitation energy uh, Q was found to be 6.6 .6 mega electron volt uh, for the uranium 235 or uranium 236. Of course, this also we can calculate by using a simple cla uh, classical mechanical equations okay the same activation energy for the uranium 239 uh, it is 6.2 mega electron volt and uh, whereas the excitation energy q is equal to 4.8 mega electron volt so we can say that uranium 236 so there is a probability of a fission uh, is more uh, than the uranium 239 Okay, I will make a detailed video uh, regarding this uh, nuclear fission reaction and a separate video on a nuclear fusion reaction. Uh, but right now you just need to know the few basic concepts about the nuclear fission reaction. So this is a one more important graph of the asymmetric distribution of the masses of the daughters of the products which are prepared. Uh, in this uh, nuclear fission reaction okay so i have written the possible combinations of the uh, products uh, over here and which shows that uh, some of the uh, one of the product is nearly in the range of 140 and another product is in a range of 95 so this is a graph of the yield percentage versus the uh, mass of the or the mass number of the fragment which says that so this is the uh, place where the uh, fragments have the exactly equal masses so which can uh, from this graph we can say that the possibility of preparation of the two daughter nuclei of the exactly same masses is very low okay and the probability of finding the uh, daughter nuclei in the range of this uh, 95 and 140 is uh, more okay so there are some characteristic of this uh, fission reaction so the uh, in a fission reaction we can see that this, uh, two neutrons are evolved in this fission reaction which are called as a prompt neutrons prompt neutrons means uh, the neutrons which are created at the time when this fission reaction occurs okay so these are called as a prompt neutrons along with this prompt neutrons the slow neutrons are also evolved so which comes uh, after some time okay so where these neutrons or where these slow neutrons are coming from so whatever daughter nuclei are uh, prepared uh, so they are radioactive in nature and they decay by this negative beta decay means um, so whatever daughter nuclei is prepared 
so that is also having the excess amount of energy and uh, this uh, excess number of the neutrons so this excess neutrons will convert that itself into the proton uh, and giving out the negative beta decay process or they will um, attain their stability by this uh, negative beta decay processes and in this processes finally the neutron will be um, neutron will be involved which are called as a delayed neutrons or the slow neutrons along with this neutrons uh, uh, prompt gamma radiations and uh, delayed gamma radiations are also involved okay whatever not a nuclei are there okay we know that if the nuclei is in a excited state it may attain the stability uh, by giving out some gamma radiations and the gamma radiations which are generated uh, at the same time when the fission reaction occurs they are called as a prompt gamma radiations and the gamma radiations we are uh, which are prepared after some time they are called as a delayed gamma radiations now along with this fission reaction fusion is also important reaction and uh, we from the school days we know that uh, fu fusion reaction is a source uh, of energy of our life because the fusion is a reaction uh, which happens in the sun and we are getting the energy from the sun that is why we can say that the fusion is a reaction uh, which is responsible uh, for the energy uh, for the living beings or for the, uh, our solar system okay so here quantum mechanically we can also evaluate the barrier potential uh, just like the barrier potential of the uh, alpha decay we can evaluate the barrier potential for this uh, nuclear fusion reaction okay and which is uh, found to be uh, very high nearly like say uh, 20 mega electron hole okay so the uh, scattering process or the uh, fusion of the one proton with the another proton that uh, that that will not give you uh, uh, energy okay so for the study purpose it is okay but when you are thinking of the uh, commercially okay so it is not possible to give this uh, uh, collision of the two protons so as to give the uh, fusion reaction okay so uh, the solution for this is the uh, thermonuclear uh, fusion reaction so in this thermonuclear fusion reaction what we do is uh, we uh, give a very high temperature uh, at a very high density so the plasma state is created in which uh, the nuclei and the protons and neutrons and electrons are uh, randomly moving over there and the, if the rate of reaction is uh, arranged properly then we can fuse a proton with a proton so as to give a, a deuteron and the electron and some amount of energy so this is called as a, a fusion reaction i will definitely made a video on this uh, fusion reaction fission reaction and the reactors also okay but this is all about the uh, nuclear reactions so we can see that the decay reactions alpha beta and gamma decay uh, these are one of the most important uh, nuclear reactions along with the uh, scattering which comes in the two categories as a elastic scattering and inelastic scattering and in the inelastic scattering also uh, that can happen in the two different ways as a formation of a compound nucleus and a, uh, and a direct nucleus and uh, nuclear fission reaction and nuclear fusion reactions are uh, two more important nuclear reactions uh, for the energy generations so keep studying stay focused that's all for today thank you for watching